What about nature? When are we in tune with nature? This is when English for dual credit, and right now we're studying romanticism. She's my favorite teacher. Yeah. You've met a lot of teachers in 12 years. Yeah, but she's definitely my favorite. Who's one person Blake would point his finger at? Um, the church. I've been passionate about going to school and teaching school combined since I was little and taught the neighborhood kids in my playhouse. Set my fort my daddy built for me. I played pretend and make believe about items I could not see. And when wind engulfed the trees, my spiral curls bounced upon my back. Now that we are out of tune with this innocence and this nature, we can appreciate it more. I think critical thinking applies in everything, whether you're resolving a, a fight with a significant other, whether you're trying to decide where to go to college. And I think that it's a life skill. When new students come into the room, they look at the ceiling and none of this makes sense. But as the year goes on, they're able to say, oh, those elephants are shooting, it reminds us of the story shooting an elephant. Or now we understand what double think is from George Orwell's 1984. It says think, think. Like writing wouldn't be fun for me, but she makes it like different than usual. Um, in the past, I, a couple of years ago, took students to England, France, Spain, Portugal, and Morocco. Uh, one of the benefits is in England, we were able to see all the things that we've been studying, like Canterbury Cathedral, and it also ties into other things that they've studied in their other classes, history, geography, foreign language, they get to practice, um, which is very helpful. She's a wonderful teacher to be around, and she really brings life into the classroom. Tired from a full day of play, those were the days. Yeah, yeah. See, you okay. need to... I was adding my own pauses. I shouldn't have done that. That's a nice memory. Is it? It makes you feel like a kid again. I know. I think that's the point. Yeah, you, you achieved like your purpose. That. Hey! <laughs> Two things. And a lot of times it's really easy to maybe look at a painting in a museum and say, ah, I like it, ah, I don't like it, ah, I could do better. But the critical thinking aspect gives it a more depth of, gives, gives the process um, more depth of thought and conversation when you start to sit down and say, okay, why don't I like this? What benefit I get from continuing to go to school is I can better answer students' questions. Like yesterday, one said, why do we have to stand up and walk across the room to find a partner? Why can't I just sit here next to the person, you know, sitting next to me? I said, well, I have an answer. You know, it all deals with oxygen moving to the brain, and studies show that when you get comfortable in the same group throughout the year, sometimes you are easier to get off task, and I'm able to answer with research that I've been studying, and I feel like that there's a basis for almost all, I won't say all, but almost all decisions I make in the classroom. I understand why I'm making them and I can answer the same question to the students. And so, and then another mm -hmm. short and simple that you feel like it's not good enough. Yeah. I've covered head to toe. Or you could do a comma. Those were the days standing in the middle of the mud. You see how the pause yeah, is different? Yeah. Okay, so you have to decide. I like the period after it. Standing in the middle of the mud, covered head to toe, feeling like I just got out, what is that? Of a mud bath. Of a mud bath. Friends, laughs, mm -hmm. apostrophe, mm -hmm. friends, laughs roll through my head. The mud monster is not dead yet. The smell of wet dirt fills my nose. Gasp. Gasps. While dad sits, mom simply gasps while dad sits and laughs. Clothes are thrown away while I am put in the tub. Tired from a full day of play, those were the days. Actually, I didn't read that right. 
tired from a full day of play, those were the days. Yeah, yeah. See, you okay. need to, I was adding my own pauses. I shouldn't have done that. That's a nice memory. It makes me feel like a kid again. I'm, it constantly forces me, because I'm a grade is attached, um, to learn new things. And if I don't have that opportunity, the curriculum that's given to me, other peers to talk about ideas, sometimes I um, take long naps. <laughs> um, whenever she learns something new, she's always really excited to tell it to us. Like, she's happy that she's teaching us something new, too, and that makes us want to learn it. The research shows, I've been learning, that um, our imagination and creativity diminish. It recent study, what happens to our creativity as we mature? 84% of students rank high in creativity in kindergarten. Only 10% rank high in creativity in grade two. Now you tell me, based on the ideas of the British Romantics, why might that occur? Raise your hand if you have a response so I, I can hear you one at a time. Thank you, Cody. Because the older you get, the more you realize the world around you and how society is pressuring you to do different things and act certain ways. And because of that, you do what? Okay, because you are busy fulfilling society's expectations. William Blake, who's one person Blake would point his finger at? Um, the church. Okay, possibly church, because that could f function as an authority. Who else might Blake? Parents. Parents, parents. Or we have that time when we get home from work with our families or whoever or whatever we hold important. All right, so take a look at your poems. Now we've revised them for imagery. We've looked at line length, we've looked at punctuation, we've talked about sound. They should be almost ready to present tomorrow. You've also had a chance to talk the plan for tomorrow where you talk about your poem, the inspiration, and how it fits the characters. Take out the white handout that you picked up on your way in. Ignore the top paragraph because this could take all day if we spend 20 minutes. You have a guideline of 15 questions that I would like you to answer about someone else's poem. Answer verbally. What I'd like you to do now and stand up and find somebody from the opposite side of the room to read his or her poem and offer the feedback based on these questions. <laughs> what are you going to do with all this again? It's, it's going to play, um, it will edit all of this material down into a one and a half to two minute profile video about you and your teaching. Okay. And it will play an awards ceremony if you win, and otherwise it will come back to you and be yours okay. forever. Okay. Well, I plan on being there. Oh, oh, you have to. <laughs> yeah. And it will be really fun. Please okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. We're Why not? Ours. That's okay. I do that too. I'm totally rewrite it tonight. Okay. Why don't you like yours? I just don't feel, I feel like it's like a kindergarten film. Like, I don't feel like it But has sometimes the, simplicity can be good because especially if you're talking about something innocent, it, remember, simplicity and innocence kind of go together. I just, maybe... When you're talking about the describing words and you don't want a lot of adjectives, mm -hmm. I don't know how to get around the adjectives. Show me a line that has adjectives. Like the crisp sound of the water, or the crisp sound of the wakeboard cutting across the water. That's too long. Well, if the, if the board is cutting across the water, I know it sounds crisp because you chose the word cutting. So do you need the word crisp? No. How, how could you rephrase it? The sound of the cut. I'm so the, I think you probably have a lot of options. The, the wakeboard cut cuts. across the water or cuts across the water, depending. Okay. And I tell you, we're so used to writing that these long, like, whatever sentences, like, descriptive. Like describing everything. It's hard to get it.
wide competition that we have at so, HEB. Uh, so Mrs. McWilliams will now be invited to the field hearing in the Woodlands, May 2nd through the 4th. She's going to go to a panel of judges, do personal interviews, and we're going to announce who our Big Ten winners are for this entire state. So Ms. McWilliams is in her category competing against four other educators. Should she win, she comes home with $10,000 for herself and then $10,000 for her school. <laughs> <laughs> Marcy, how many total? Uh, and then uh, we had 23 semi-finalists oh, and then narrowed that to 40 finalists and then uh, including Ms. McWilliams. Yeah, so 